the top photograph here is uh, of Newstead Pit Yard after 1962 uh, when the new screens were, were, were uh, built. Uh, prior to that the screens came down the side, the screens and the washery came down the side of the headstocks down the side of the railway line. This photo is taken uh, from the top of the floodlight tower as you go over the level crossing from Newstead Village into the pit yard, the level, the floodlight tower on your left hand side. This photo is taken from the top of the floodlight tower. If I can just point a few things out to you, uh, this is number one electrical engine house with number one headstocks. Number number two uh, headstocks, which was the upcast shaft with the engine house and the washery at the back. Uh, what happened, the coal came up uh, up the number one headstocks across a, a, a conveyor belt and then into the washery and then the process of washing the coal uh, was carried out. At this time there used to be a, another conveyor go across towards the old railway sidings which uh, the dirt was tipped into buckets then and taken on the aerial ropeway down to the south tip down towards Limby. The north tip at this time Newstead had stopped tipping on it by this time. They was using the aerial ropeway to tip on the south. If you look here uh, at the uh, features, you've got the stockyard above uh, the, the colliery, up towards Annesley colliery up here. Mm -hmm. You've got the uh, sidings where all the uh, railway wagons were stored and then what they did, they came down and under the screens and coal were dropped straight into the railway wagons, came down through the middle of the pit yard and then down to the sidings south of the colliery. Just here, situated uh, next to the uh, washery, is the electrical shop and the powerhouse. Uh, all the electrical switch gear for underground cables etc was in there. If you can see just going up there uh, a slight rise going up onto the north pit tip where the Newstead Eco Park is now, uh, you can see an indent there. What there used to be that was originally prior to 61 and uh, in the 30s, 40s and 50s there used to be uh, an haulage go up that hill and dump the dirt out of tubs onto the top where it was spread out. You can see that there's a lagoon on the top there now. Whether it's the same lagoon that's there now, I'm not. I'm not certain about that. But uh, I'll just tell you a little story about this aerial ropeway. Uh, my father-in-law, Gerald Smith. Uh, during the war years, in the 40s, uh, it was a, a blacksmith rope man. And early one morning, they'd left, they'd left the rope out. It was a, a, a mane and tail rope. They'd left the rope out on the pit tip overnight. And the pit tip at that time was self-combusting. And it had burnt the rope and damaged it. So my father-in-law and his cousin, Jack Smith, they went up onto this aerial, uh, onto this ropeway to repair it. What they'd got, they'd got a wheel on the top and it, the rope just used to pull the tubs up and then they tipped it. There was up there at one foggy morning during the war years when they dived for cover. They was working right on the very top and a, a, light, uh, a light training plane came over and actually crashed in the fields which was just north of the pit tip up here and the pilot were killed. Uh, they say the area were secured and everything like that and but the, the pilot had died. So my father-in-law, although he worked down the mine, he nearly got killed on, on top of a pit tip during the war years. <laughs> it, just, it just shows you what, what happened. Uh, round about that time in the 19... 
fifties uh, uh, coming up sixties that tipping needs to really really finish tipping on that tip there and you can see up there where Annesley are tipping from Annesley Colliery <coughs> up there so mm, that was like Newstead's first pit tip then then what they did they started tipping south of Newstead down down <coughs> towards Limby